Terry Irwin. When Steve and I filmed our first episode of The Crocodile Hunter, never in our wildest dreams did we think it would become a worldwide phenomenon. G'day and welcome. Every time I hear his voice, I see the shows. It just takes me back to such a fun time. What do you enjoy about these shows? I love seeing Steve firstly. We're going to be capturing one of the rarest crocodiles in the world. The second thing is, of course, I get to see myself young, so <laughs> it's pretty cool. This episode is one of our favourites because it shows how in tune Steve was with reptiles. He instinctively knew when it was safe to get up close and when it was time to run. There's Komodos everywhere. Watch with us as we share memories of Steve and the dragon. A scene one, take one, and someone goes, Mark. Mark. I've noticed that Crocodile Hunter is so important because it really brings wildlife into your living room, into your house. You experience it. It's not watching something on the long lens, hey. Exactly, and the, the amazing thing about it too is it doesn't date. So when you watch it now, you're like, it's still like you watched it yesterday, and that's what I love about it. We're traveling on an island trading boat through a remote part of the Indonesian archipelago to the last surviving stronghold of the world's biggest lizard. Check this place out, unbelievable. This is the home of the drag. We're north of Australia and west of Papua New Guinea, traveling around a few tiny scraps of land that make up Komodo National Park. Only one of these islands is big enough to appear on a map of the world. Komodos are only found on a handful of islands. This is remote, it's really remote, hence the wild boat trip. Have a go at the welcoming committee. <laughs> Check this out. Woo. Welcome to the islands. When you visit the dragons, known locally as auras, you'll always be under the watchful eyes of wildlife rangers. Steve is very experienced with crocodiles, snakes, lizards, all reptiles, so he's allowed some freedom. Oh. <laughs> Woo -hoo! Komodo dragon welcoming party. Holy smokes, this is gonna be an adventure. Excuse me. As I try to weave my way past the welcoming committee, I spot a couple of huge dragons feeding in the mangroves. And I didn't know it, the dragons frenzy feed. They see me, which triggers a food response, and they rush straight at me, trying to get my calf muscles and my thighs. If they connect, they're gonna make me bleed, and then it's all over by the shout. They just keep coming straight at me. No, 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 no. Hideously dangerous. One bite and I'm a god. Get out. Back off, get out. Holy smokes, that was too close. Oh, hey, yeah. Let's follow them. I've been allowed to get right in close to the lizards, but they are dangerous. In a food response, they could kill, and that's why it's important for visitors to travel with rangers. The locals call this dragon Badas, and he's an enormous Komodo. He's been scavenging near the water. Where the fishermen have set lines, he's taken advantage of the fish but unfortunately, he's gotten the hook right down his throat, and now Steve's got to help him out, or it could cost the lizard his life. And it isn't that easy. I've got to try and get out in front of the lizard and pull the fishing One tooth straight through my leather boots, straight through the Gore-Tex, into the sock. Look at that. He's sitting there, eh? He's like in sensory overload. Holy smokes. Whoo. Danger, danger, danger. Unbelievable. I'm just gonna ease myself out of this tree. He's on me. He's staring straight at me. I'm gonna have to be really careful and get ready to run, because there's blood in the air. And if he senses that, he'll attack again. That was amazing. We're out of here, come on. Whoa. That was close. That was really, really close. And I still have that boot. I have the boot. Do you really? Yeah, I have the boot that 
got split by the Komodo dragon and it just went through the leather like butter. It's That's amazing. And yet, once in captivity, they're like beautiful. They're like gorgeous. dogs. So you can hug them and kiss them. Yeah. Kiss them on the lips. I remember when Bindi was little and she'd go in with the Komodo dragon here at Australia Zoo and um, she'd hug on it and kiss it. When you see them in the wild, it's a very different story. And if you read the textbooks, the really big ones can't climb trees. So someone forgot to show that Komodo dragon the textbook. Yeah, did you see how high he got? Oh, yeah, not a problem. No, just whoop, straight yeah. up. Yep, textbook oh, wrong. What an amazing animal. That was cool. Oh, I love Komodos. Sunrise. In the islands is always a classic time. All of the nocturnal animals, the deer and the buffalo, they start to seek refuge. They don't want to be out and about and in an area where they could get ambushed by a Komodo. Here we go. Dragon poo. Now, like all goannas or most large goannas, large monitors, their poo is very significant. Not only is it to, uh, significant to me, the researcher, but it's also significant to other dragons. This poo will tell another dragon exactly what's going on. Perfect, absolutely perfect. That's a, another dragon's claw, and I can tell by this, well, the dragon that this big one ate was probably around about, ooh, four feet, three and a half to four feet. So he would have grabbed, lacerated, killed the little dragon, ooh, swallowed it down hole. The droppings tell us this is a big dragon's home range. They mark their territory, and the sunny side of the slope is where we'll find it, getting the body temperature up for the day's hunting. Have a look at the size of this. He's a beauty. There's a good boy. He's got some really heavy duty scars on his back from territorial disputes with other Komodos. They bite each other on the tail and the back. Have a look at those feet. Bigger than my hands. What a reptile. Yes, this is one of the ruling reptiles. You can see why they're immense. Absolutely immense. I just take my time, nice and steady. Nice and steady. I tell you what, this is really intimidating. I'm just watching his back feet. At the moment, he's quite relaxed. Komodos, like all goannas, they're ambush predators. And within their own body length, they're faster than, faster than I could ever move. He'd have teeth like a tiger shark. The Komodo dragons are from the same family as the Australian goannas and other monitor lizards, or varanids. Don't let that lumbering dinosaur walk fool you. These guys can switch on a real sprint and hit almost 12 miles an hour when they hunt their prey. Komodos can be creatures of habit. Regular pathways become well-worn tracks and that flicking tongue is tasting the air for any sign that potential prey has passed by recently. He's located something in this grass. This early morning dew holds the smell very well. And I can see some fresh dung here. Whoa. You can see this fresh dung. Whoa, danger. His tail's curled. He's ready to whip me. Hey, mate. He's got the look. <laughs> this is a body posture, which means back off, or I'll belt you with this tail. Right, so a, a brief pause in the shade, keep his body temperature regulated, and away he goes again. He's on the hunt. He's moving his head side to side, tasting the air to locate the direction of any food, and he's keeping a very careful eye on Steve. Dealing with these big lizards is something I've wanted to do all my life, and here I am, right amongst them. But I'm being very careful, no mistakes. Because at nine feet, he'd have the capacity to bring me down. If you can imagine these guys kill, 
and consume buffalo, deer, wild pigs. But luckily, we're not on the food list. We're not on the menu. Ooh, he just hissed at me. The hiss is a warning, and that mouth is full of curved, serrated teeth designed like razor blades for grasping and cutting. Their bite is similar to a shark, capable of slicing through tough hide. I'm in no danger. He's relaxed. What a head! Like a dinosaur. Those ears, slits behind the head, very good sense of hearing. And the eyes, really good at picking up any movement in the savannah. They've got big nostrils to suck in a lung full of air. And you can see that saliva, the drool that dribbles out of their mouth. It contains bacteria. Even when they bite an animal, if that saliva gets in, it will cause death. He's sensing the air with his forked tongue as he strides back into the bush. The Komodo's body language is saying, stay away from me. There's that curled tail ready to snap out with incredible force. Wow. Have you ever met anyone who can make poo exciting? <laughs> no, it was pretty exciting, actually. Yeah, I know. It was like, you know, a treasure hunt, like looking for Easter eggs Sunday morning. It's amazing. <laughs> he can even talk about poo and it's exciting, but... Um, but it's how a cool. Really good way to actually know what... When, goannas are very territorial, or monitors are very territorial, so they'll actually do these poos in certain areas to let other monitors know. So when you're in an area, you can actually... Like out at Windora. Yeah. And you go to certain areas and there's parenti poo put in little spots so you can get an idea of the population numbers and size. It's and what's weird is they seem to triangulate. Mm. So it's always that triangle formation for the poo. Yep. It's fascinating. And you can tell how big they are. You can tell a lot by poo. You can. And it's less scary. <laughs> These creek beds provide an excellent shelter, nice cool retreat for the dragons and of course all species. And this is a wild place, really wild. Komodos are ambush predators if they were up against these rocks, tucked in there in ambush mode, you'd never know it. So I'm keeping my wits about me, just like the rest of the wildlife around here. There's a whole troop of monkeys going through the leaf litter, picking up the berries and the figs. Getting a feed, prime dragon food. Komodos could hear that, the dragons, they'd zoom straight in. And uh, while they're having a bit of play, a bit of fight, wait, 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 wait for their moment. Yeah. The monkey troop is well organized. Those warning sounds are an escape plan and the dragon misses out. Steve's heard a dragon moving through the undergrowth near a stagnant water hole. And there he is, tasting the water with his tongue before lowering his head to slurp it down. They can go for long periods of time without water. But when water's available, they'll drink long and often, especially after dinner. He fills his mouth and slurps it down. Freeze. Have a look at this. This is a Russell's Viper. Oh, he's grumpy too. He's really grumpy. This is one of the most feared animals in this part of the archipelago. They're very fast, highly toxic venom. If you don't get the serum, you got a good chance of dying. A snake this size, it'd kill you. And he looks just like a rattlesnake. The thing that is different, oh, is that he hasn't got the, the pits at the front of his head like the rattlesnake that can detect heat. The coloration is just like the leaf litter. I've got to get him off the track. These animals have killed more people in Indonesia than any there other species. There and that they're way. aggressive. Once I get him off the track, he strikes. Naughty little snake. It's good to get him off the track because they got a bad habit of getting squashed by big mammals like the buffalo and the deer. The Komodo, of course, they'd eat him down real quick. Have a 
have a look at the size of this monster. I mean, let's just sneak up a bit. But I needed to give myself enough room that I can run. The discovery of a good food supply is often what triggers mating. Males and females encounter each other when groups of dragons are attracted to the food source. And after they've eaten their fill, they'll sometimes mate, usually in the dry season, from January to October. How's this? This is a nest site. So this is where the females come. After they've been mated with, eggs develop in their belly, they start to get distended, and then they come up here, there's a patch in the gallery forest that allows complete sun to come down, and you can see all the tracks. It's just a whole maze of tracks. Just got to keep an eye out for big males that might be in ambush. And this is where they come. This is where they come to lay their eggs. They go right down into these holes where the soil is moist and the temperature is around about 30 degrees Celsius. They'll lay their eggs. We think they lay their eggs at night. I've found through all of my years of research that most goannas, most monitors, baronids, like the dragon, uh, will deposit their eggs at night. Isn't that interesting? I love how they all nest in the one place like that. Isn't that incredible? Yeah, that's a good point. Mm. So everything must be right. Yeah. Soil temperature, sun position. A break in that gallery forest so the sun can get in because they have a long, long, long period that it takes for those eggs to hatch. Like it's nine, nine months, I think, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, so a very, very long time. So I guess they've got to get it really, really perfect. And then I love that Jurassic Park feel where he goes, now, I've got to get ready to run. <laughs> yeah, he's yeah. Like walking in going. Which... How spooky was that? Well, you know, all through those areas, it's all high grass and that's how they hit. Oh. So they sit in the grass and as the deer go past, they literally just go <laughs> and grab that leg, split the leg as the animal runs off. And because of that venom slash saliva and bacteria, the animal slowly dies and then it brings all the dragons in and all they all start feeding on it at the same time. It's amazing stuff. That is so cool mm. and terrifying and velociraptor-ish. Yeah, imagine if you're on your own. <laughs> oh, look at this. Check this out. Yep, unreal. Here's a girl scratching out a nest. She's got a belly full. She's got a light. Normally, the female dragons, or as a general rule, female uh, goannas, aren't all that worried. Once they've got it in their head, we must lay. They dig, dig, dig. She's been digging in this hole for quite a while. And it's really nice, soft dirt. And when a female's going to lay her eggs, they get quite intent on what they're doing. She'll deposit her eggs at the end of her nest chamber, then pack dirt back over them. Her maternal instincts are strong. She's proud to be a mom. Hey, cutie. I'm laying some eggs. It's usually around about seven or nine months incubation period. And once, once the eggs have hatched, the babies have to emerge, get up out of this soil on their own, avoid predators, and then they go straight up a tree. The little ones are arboreal. They can climb, no worries at all. When they're big adults, they're too clumsy and they surely fall down. Oh. Hey, there's two of them up here. These ones are yearlings. They're about a year old. They've got to go into the trees, otherwise the big Komodos are going to eat them. Even the teenage Komodos will eat these little ones. They're highly cannibalistic. Ah. I see what's going on. Big Komodo cruising around in the savannah. That's why they're sitting up here so quiet. I don't say I blame him. He's a big lizard. If he's seven, seven and a half feet in length, maybe more, and he's in feed mode. He's looking, whooshing, whooshing. he's scanning the savannah for a feed. Yeah, good choice, really good choice. They're instinctive ambush predators. And if the island deer stray too close, the Komodo's ready to lunge even though in this case, it's a much bigger animal. Have a look at this. We've got a standoff. Look at the deer. It's, it's anticipating it. The Komodo's turning away. Hear that? That's a stress call. I'm not sure whether it's barking at me or the Komodo. It's 
sun's starting to go down. This is the perfect time of the day to see wildlife. It's starting to cool off. Now that the sun's down, let's see what the Komodos are up to after dark. These nice rocky outcrops. There's geckos and skinks running around everywhere. Holy smokes. Have a look at this. You're a big girl by the look of it. Sitting up there, nice and high up here, having a sleep. It's a really warm night. There's no need for her to go into a burrow. She's just going to sit out on top of this ledge. A feral cat. Steve's about to make an incredible discovery. This species of snake is not known to live on these islands. Yeah, have a look at this. Wow. Check this out. Have a look at this little beauty. It's a Timor python. I never thought in my wildest dreams I'd ever get to see a Timor python. Have a look at the color of his head. Beautiful golden pattern. Spectacular snake. He scents in the air. Forked tongue, just like the Komodo dragon. Aren't they glorious? Have a look on his bottom jaw. Just along there, he's got pits. They're heat sensing pits. He wants to go back up his tree. There you go, mate. Back into your tree. Up he goes. How'd you be looking for them at night? I don't know whether I want to be walking around on Komodo Island at night. No. With giant prehistoric lizards. <laughs> no. But they're primarily diurnal, aren't they? Yes, they are. But you know, um, it's actually a good time to, to find monitors because with a head torch on, you can cruise around and see them at night, especially in crevices and things like that. And so. are the big water buffalo there? I yes, can't yes, that yeah, so they, well. they, that's the technique is just grab their leg. Yep, grab their and leg. And then they eventually succumb to the infection slash venom. Yep. And then you've got a big feed. And then, like you said, with that incredible sense of smell, ah, they track it down slowly, slowly. Good. So, what could go wrong going out at night? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> daylight, and the locals have tipped us off about a big dragon that's taken to the water, probably swimming to a nearby island where there's good hunting. Got a couple of leaks, but as long as I work a bit quicker than they do, I should stay afloat. Steve's keeping a close watch for wildlife, especially dragons, who can be powerful swimmers. There'll be the usual marine predators here like sharks, but these days only one big reptile. They used to have crocodiles here, but they've since become extinct. So it looks like the dragon has taken up the niche as the number one scavenger, predator, hard-hitting reptile. I hope I spot the dragon soon. This isn't exactly the most seaworthy outrigger that I've ever been in. I just gotta keep bailing. There he is! It's a big bloke, and he's steaming across the water. It's unlikely that he's hunting. The dragon is a terrestrial animal, and the only time he'd slip into the sea would be to escape a predator or get somewhere else. Look at him power through the water like a crocodile. How's the strength? He's steaming across the channel. Strong, the power, just like a crocodile. Got his legs tucked in. He's steaming through the water. I'm flat out keeping up, and he's too big to be worried by predators, so the reason he's in the water is to go from one island to another. He's probably sniffed out some food. They're known to swim more than half a mile through strong currents to reach a herd of goats grazing on a nearby island. They'll stay until they've eaten the goats, however long it takes, and then swim back again. They'll only make a swim like this if the food supply's short on their own island and if the wind's blowing in the right direction to bring the scent across. And this is a huge dragon. Probably the biggest one we've seen. So close to 10 foot, it's not funny. Almost as big as they get. Oh. 
On the downside, his movement's restricted, but that won't stop him sniffing out and striking anything edible. Check him out. He's just having a bit of a rest. Here he goes. How's this? I hope you can't smell this. <laughs> Makes me nervous. He turns straight at me. He can sense the blood. He goes into feed mode and he readies for a strike. Straight at me. Woo! When this guy is on, they're right on. I guess you've got to look at me and go, yeah, this must be edible. Luckily enough, I'm able to go through the spider mangroves, those aerial roots, and stay out of his way. He's in hunt mode. Look at that forked tongue going. Talk about location. They can locate anything. And once they go into this mode, anything moves, bang, it's sensory overload. They hit it. A little bit of bark falls off the tree. Whack! Straight at it. Phenomenal. The keenest sense of sight. Phenomenally keen. Real good eye for movement. He's scanning, scanning. Because I tell you what, see how nice and pink my toes are? He spots them and lines up for a strike. He has another go at me. Look at this. He wants me. I'm going higher. I just don't feel safe. Look at him. He's right at me. Hmm. He's starting to lose interest and move off. It's starting to get safer. He's heading out of the mangroves and into the scrub. Time for me to move up, but I'm going to give myself a lot of distance. He's in food mode and I won't want to get too close because it's easy to see that he is on. Look at the power in those legs. Talk about a living dinosaur strutting his stuff. They exude a sense of power and prehistory. Look at that forked tongue. Magnificent animal. He's starting to get out of hunting mode and into an inquisitive mode as he goes from side to side, picking up the scent of something. And now he's starting to jog. He's heading out into the savannah in a jog. Where is he going? What's he doing? Let's follow him and see what he's up to. Woo! Dragons can run over 12 mile an hour. This one's running, I don't know, four or five. This is only a trot. They go faster here. He's picking up speed. I don't know where they're going. Woo! They're chasing something. He's slowing down. This is a trot. Whoa! He's slowing down. Here he goes. Into the shade. Notice the way. As he struts, his head, head goes side to side and his forked tongue goes out. It's like my ears. As I'm listening, if I hear something, I can tilt to one side and detect where it is. They are a highly sophisticated animal. Their senses are very well honed. And it's important that I follow him from the water to his destination to get a better understanding of those instincts. They are one complex animal. As well as the obvious use for walking and running, the feet and claws are designed for other purposes. They can be powerful weapons for defense or tearing at prey, efficient digging tools for unearthing eggs or building nests, and in males, as hands for gripping their partner during mating. We just look for a nice, comfortable spot. He's scavenging amongst the debris left on the high tide. He grabs a bit. Yuck, spits it back out. It's not edible. Whoa, he's starting to curl his tail up. He doesn't like my presence. <laughs> I guess I was in his way. <laughs> tail whips are just a warning, but a good solid one at that. Oh, she's starting to sting a bit. Actually, have a look at this. See a bit of a bruise there. What happened was, Kind of the tail hit me across there, and that was like whoosh, whoosh, the last part of the tail connecting. Hey, 
Quick, get a good shot of it, because this is like the best souvenir I could ever get. What an impressive animal. You've just got to love and respect them. Wow. Did he have no shoes on there? I don't know. <laughs> I was just terrified. I don't know. <laughs> no shoes. shoes on. Oh. Well, that sounds clever. Yeah. Yeah, mm. I would expect that for him to do that. He's just, it's just so in tune with him, isn't he? It's time to leave the park rangers behind and look for more Komodo dragons all around the shores of these volcanic islands. The coast is so rugged that a boat's the only way to do it. Check this out. Really, really active. Commotion in the ocean. The continuous seismic activity of the Earth's crust in eastern Indonesia produces unexpected currents and disturbances in the ocean. And the volcanic origins of the islands has created a landscape of scenic grandeur and rare beauty. What a beautiful morning. We're in some pretty deep water, and I'm up here on deck with me mates. There's about 60 species of birds in the islands. This one's a heron, hunting on the tidal flats. Even got an early morning fisherman. And another early riser, trying his luck in the waves. The movement of fish stimulates the dragon, but the best he could hope for is something to scavenge on the tide line. Have a look at this big bloke. Oh, 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 oh. He's beach combing. I think he likes to look at my feet. You can see all bits and pieces get washed up here. Sorry, mate. Beachcombing is usually pretty slim pickings, and the most productive areas for the Komodos is back inland on the game trails. Now here's something high on the list of preferred food, wild pig. There's pigs all around us. They're very nervous, and the reason they're coming in here is for these, tamarind. Here's one. Got a real, yeah, citrusy type flavour. Pigs love them. There are 15 species of snake on the islands. Around half of them are venomous, and three are dangerous enough to kill humans. What a little cutie. This is the green viper. And don't get lulled into a false sense of security with his color. That is the brightest green. And have a look at his head. Beautiful little snake, but he's a viper. And they are highly venomous. Not as venomous as the other viper out here on the islands, the Russell's viper, but this bloke would actually... Naughty little snake. This bloke would actually contain enough venom to knock me over. No problem at all. Now, they're really fast strikers. You can see that S position that he's in there. He's going to bite me. No biting. I should have picked a bigger stick. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. There we go. Have a look at that tail. See the end of his tail? See how it's orange? Now, he'll actually use that. We call it caudal luring. He'll wiggle that like that, and that'll attract geckos, which is one of his main food sources. And as it comes to get his little wiggle, whack, he'll grab it, envenomate it, and then work it down, swallow it down. Hey, what are you doing? Oh, you're a grump. Grumpy little snake. 
Boy, he's grumpy. Oh. <laughs> he thinks I'm gonna eat him. I'll leave him alone. <laughs> Funny little viper. It doesn't take long to locate wildlife in the monsoonal vine forest. There are so many habitats for so many different species. Steve's like a kid in a candy store. If he's not up in the trees looking for wildlife, he's down on the ground. This is the gosong, the local name of the megapode bird. Have a look at the size of this mound. And there's Komodos all around. Now this is Steve's chance to interact with Komodos in a way he has done with so many other species of reptile. It's a calculated risk, but Steve has worked with crocodiles, snakes, and lizards for his entire life. And the ultimate experience for him is to be at one with them. The dragons are very intent on looking for birds and birds' eggs. I'm gonna hold my ground. The area all the way around me is thick with Komodos. There's two right in front, and there's several in the fringe. And I can hear a big one, and so can this little one. They're always ever present of the noise of bigger dragons around us. I've got to be really careful, as careful as these smaller dragons, for one slip up could be potentially dangerous. Steve's not afraid of them, and while they're cautious, they seem to accept his presence. And I'm going one on one. I've got to be careful not to move my fingers or something small enough that they think it's a food source. Oh, just like that. Luckily enough, it thought I was too big and backed off. There's Komodos all around me. Look at this bigger one behind me. Just checking me out. I'm going to curl back up. Even though she's got a mouth full of egg, she still comes back out. I'm surrounded by Komodos. There's at least a dozen, and I keep throwing dirt and sticks, which plays on their movement receptors and gives them something else to think about rather than me. The smell of food is driving them a little crazy. Luckily enough, there's no big steamer lizards that would see me as a food source. But I'm gonna hold my ground. Ooh, here she comes. Oh, tongue flip right on the face. Luckily enough, it's more interested in going back into the eggs. <laughs> Licked on the face by a Komodo dragon. She had a feed. Licked my face. She's on her way. With the smell of food, they're becoming more and more inquisitive. It's important that I hold my ground and don't lose my concentration because they are really inquisitive. Notice how it pulled away when I moved my foot towards it. There's Komodos everywhere. Ooh, this one's a little bigger. It's starting to get a bit nervy. Nope, not edible. And another one. They're coming right at me, one at a time. Just move towards it. Come on. No, it's starting to back off. This is OK. It's moving off. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whew. It thinks I'm unedible, too. Have a look at this. There's Komodos everywhere. Whoa, these two, they're arching their neck. They're puffing out their throats. Look how stiff they're going. It's on. It's going to happen. Here we go. The aggressor takes a position. Got a fight on our hands. Whoa. They get really, really aggressive. And they face up to each other. They can inflict a powerful blow and one may die. They wrestle, wrestle. As long as they don't bite, they won't kill each other. It's like a big standoff. No matter how calm they seem, the Komodo dragon can explode into action in an instant. There's really nothing else like them anywhere on Earth. Salamat Tingal. <laughs> well, what an epic, total epic Komodo dragons. Woohoo!
What I love most about this episode is that I love Komodo dragons. They're probably in my top two or three favourite ever reptiles. So seeing Steve work with them and getting so close to them and seeing them in so many different ways, I just, I can't get enough of Komodos. I love them. I like Steve's enthusiasm. That was my favorite part of this because, you know, seeing something that is so big and dangerous and awesome and beautiful that nearly takes you out and all you want to do is spend time with it, that's really amazing. And I think it's so special that he just loved everything. Oh yeah, you just tried to kill me, again. Well, I love you. <laughs>